Governor DeWitt Clinton of New York. His dream changed America's destiny, for he was the father of the Erie Canal, the golden gateway to the West, more than a century ago. Opened in 1825, the Erie Canal was the first empire builder in our history. It was the only water highway through the long Appalachian mountain chain. Supplying a route for the settlers to go west, it gave them a means for shipping their goods back east. Overnight, the canal opened the east to the west and the west to the east. Okay, so we've crossed our wake and completed our great loop. But those of you watching this video series haven't completed yours yet. There's still 120 miles or so of the Erie Canal left to see. So saddle up and let's move on. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go! We're burning daylight! We left Waterford and entered a series of locks known as the Flight. There are five locks in a row that raise you a total of 165 feet and get you started on the Erie Canal. Day at Mohawk Harbor Marina in Schenectady. Friday, July 15th, we passed through three more locks on our way to Amsterdam, New York, where we spent the night at their Riverlink Park Marina.
there at about 9 o'clock probably. So. The next day, we cleared another 23 miles and three locks to get to the village of Kenajahari, where we tied up for Saturday night. On Sunday, we moved another 20 miles or so to Little Falls. Maybe I shouldn't say anything, but the Erie Canal that we're traveling on now isn't really the Erie Canal. The 1825 Erie Canal is long gone, mostly filled in and built over. If you look, you can find little pieces of the original canal here and there. The original canal was enlarged relocated and upgraded three times. The version that exists today is from around 1910 to 1918. It wasn't even called the Erie Canal. I used to live and work right next to the canal. Its official name was the Mohawk River and Barge Canal. However, by 1992, all the commercial traffic had dried up, so they renamed it the Erie Canal, presumably to sound more attractive for historic and tourism purposes. It's sort of like taking an old cruise ship from the 1930s and displaying it as the Mayflower. It's not really the Mayflower, but maybe people won't notice. At any rate, we had a smooth 20 mile ride. The last lock of the day was lock number 17. This lock has the highest lift of any single lock in the New York Canal system at over 40 feet. The guillotine type door weighs 150 tons. We're going to have to grab those last two before this boat. Yep. No, the last two. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, those will work. Yes. I didn't see that one. You get it? Shortly after passing through Lock 17, we stopped for the day at Little Falls Canal Harbor.
Monday, July 18th, the forecast called for rain and thunderstorms on and off all day. So we settled in to spend the day in Little Falls. Sharon did laundry, and I repaired the door frame of one of our storage lockers. On Tuesday, we had a short, smooth day as we traveled from Little Falls to the Aquavino restaurant in Utica. Wednesday, July 20th would be the final day of our journey. As we left Utica and traveled 28 miles and passed through three locks and route to Sylvan Beach, New York.
the, 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 that's all, folks.